the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special Cube Conversation. I'm John Furrier, joined Dave Vellante for a special report and analysis on the Dell Technologies VMware spin out transaction, contemplation, story, circulating rumors. Um, thanks for joining. Dave, great, great to see you. Um, yesterday we filmed a Zoom, I was at home, you were in the office, we had to get the story out for the hot take on the news that Dell Technologies is spinning out VMware. Uh, we had a lot of hot takes, um, you got some amendments to make, but one of the things um, that came out of that was that we, after we had the interview, we said, look, let's just go get some more data. So I went out off on my own, you went off on your own to get some dig ins to get some data and get some reporting on this, investigate this further. Here's what I've found. I've heard a rumor and have confirmed from a great source that Michael Dell isn't selling. So the story's off, um, which would mean our half our analysis is off. But I also got some data that points to some other things that we said are consistent. So one, I want to get your thoughts. The rumor that I'm hearing is that Dell is not selling from my sources. What are you hearing? Yeah, I think there's a different take here, John. I mean, everybody assumed when the press release came out in the 13D that Dell was spinning off uh, its, its stake, people in, inferred from that that they were selling. I think, in fact, this is not a sale. Uh, I think everybody was wrong about that. I think, in fact, what, what, what Dell is going to do is distribute its stake, its 81% stake to shareholders and so to Dell shareholders and of course what's going to happen is Michael Dell owns a very large portion of Dell Technologies I, I think by recollection I think it's over 60 percent uh, and as a result he's the largest shareholder of Dell and he's th that 81 percent is going to get distributed to the Dell shareholders so he's going to end up with more than half of the ownership of VMware all said and done. So Michael Dell is, is I think ultimately gonna, gonna have more than half of the ownership of Dell Technologies. I think it's 60, 65%, uh, probably 63, 65% somewhere in there by my recollection. And, I, and he's gonna end up with more than 51% of VMware, John. And so you're gonna have, I mean, it, make, it would make sense, wouldn't it, that the, that the majority shareholder is going to be chairman of both companies. And so you've talked so to a bunch got, of people on this, is that right? So just to get some background, what, where did you- Yeah, I think some it? people, I think some people on Wall Street have figured this out, but it's definitely not hit the mainstream news. Um, I think, you know, if you read the news, you read like the register, you read, I mean, essentially we made the same inference that the Dell was becoming untethered to VMware. I, I funny at all. I don't think that's happening at all. I, it, it also, I've talked to a number of customers, John, uh, about this, asking them what they thought about the news yesterday, and there, there was a big shrug. I mean, I talked to one customer, said, hey, I, you know, in the old days, I bought, I bought Block from EMC, I bought File from NetApp, they both made great products, they both were VMware friendly, this doesn't affect me one bit. And other customers I talked to said, yeah, I don't really see any, any big change here. And I don't think anything's going to change. I think if Michael Dell is the chairman of both companies, I don't think anything changes. All right, so to correct what we had, what we had our hot take, which was, oh, untethering, spinning out VMware, implying that there's going to be an untethering or VMware can make it on their own, which, which I by the think, I think our analysis was right on the, on the value of VMware. So, I mean, I stand by that report, no problem. It's the specifics of Dell Technologies appearing as if they're unloading it. Okay, so that's the nuance Every here. So the nuance That's is right. Michael Dell actually is going to maintain, stay in control. He's not going anywhere. That's what you're just saying. Is that true? Yeah, picture the block diagrams. You got Dell over here and inside of Dell, you have 81% ownership of VMware. And over here you have VMware. But essentially what, what, what Dell is doing is saying, okay, all you Dell shareholders, we're going to allow you to now directly own those VMware shares. And so they're going to transfer essentially from owning Dell to owning VMware directly. Of course, Michael Dell now is going to own VMware directly as opposed to owning it through his ownership of Dell. As a result, it cleans up the hair on this, this, this conglomerate structure, which means it's unlock, and you've seen it in the stock market today in, in the last you know, month, it's unlocking value for Dell, it's unlocking value for VMware. John, on June 22nd, prior to the Wall Street Journal breaking that they were contemplating this, 
Dell's core value, in other words, the value net of VMware was around negative 23 billion. Today, it's negative 4 billion. So they've already compressed about $20 billion uh, out of that negative value. And that's the arbitrage play now. And I think it just goes up from here. The second thing is, a lot of investors that I talk to won't touch VMware stock because it's controlled by Dell. This, 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 this liquidity hangover that I always talk about. I think this is going to bring other investors, you know, in from the sideline. So that is, everybody inferred that, that Dell was becoming untethered. Dell becomes a lot less interesting without VMware. That, that, that's wrong. Nothing really changes in terms of the commercial relationship between these two co companies and the impact on customers. So essentially, if I oversimplify it for my simple brain here, Dell is IPOing shares of VMware to the shareholders of Dell. What a benefit that is. Yeah, I, I mean, again, they're just- <laughs> I mean, it's they're, not an IPO in the sense of an IPO. It's basically saying, hey, shareholders of Dell, good job. If you want the value of VMware, go take it. So you remember how this all came about? Um, this, 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 this. Remember when Dell bought VMware, they, 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 had to, they had a gap between the amount of cash they could raise, the amount of debt they took on, the amount of cash that Michael Dell and Silver Lake and a couple other partners threw in, like it was only about 4 billion to get 67 billion. And the way they, they, they covered that gap was they, they created a tracking stock called DVMT. And DVMT was supposed to track VMware, VMware uh, uh, value, it really didn't. And so what happened was DVMT was a public company, Dell wanted to go public again and said, okay, we're going to do this through, uh, through the DVMT vehicle and we're going we're to issue shares of Dell. And you remember Carl Icahn and Elliot, they were very active and they sort of got Michael in a headlock and said, we need more if you're going to do that. And they did. Ultimately, Dell goes public, but then they face this liquidity hangover. And so also you might recall that Dell floated Pivotal and monetized that to delever. They paid down some debt and then basically went to VMware and said, okay, you're going to buy Pivotal back. They used some cash and they issued shares. So my, the Dell's ownership of VMware escalated to 81% at the time. That's how they got to 81%. I remember thinking, wow, how much is this company are they going to own? Well, this is, this is what it allowed them to do. It now allows them to distribute the shares and allows Michael Dell personally to, to have the majority ownership of VMware. I mean, it's an absolute genius. And it cleans up the, the structure of the organization. So instead of having to own VMware through Dell, which by the way, I've always said, it's a cheap way to own VMware. So good move if you bought Dell stock to buy, to own VMware. Now you own VMware directly, and of course, Michael Dell owns it directly. A absolute genius move over the last three, four, five years. Yeah, and one of the things we did say in our hot take yesterday was is that that negative value of Dell technology world, Dell technologies gets shrunk and also can create value. Here they're even getting more value in the ownership of VMware. So I got, but I got to ask you, you mentioned a comment about this liquidity hangover and they have this dividend. Could you explain yeah. that? Because I'm just not following this liquidity problem. Well, it's, it's, this is very interesting. So Dell, because it has so much debt, number one, number two, because it has controlling uh, 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 sh uh, share ownership of VMware, and it has 90 plus percent voting power, shareholders penalize Dell. And, and so the big thing here is the debt. What essentially Dell is doing, and people always you know, joke that, that VMware is Dell's piggy bank, and it's true, and here it comes again. We saw that with Pivotal, we saw that with DVMT. What I think is happening, John, is, is Dell is going to essentially transfer some of its debt to VMware. So it's going to have VMware take on a little bit more debt. It's, it is said that they want to maintain uh, investment grade ratings for VMware, which currently has great ratings. Dell does not have investment grade rating. It needs to pay down more debt. So essentially it's going to shift some of that debt to VMware through a special dividend of which Dell will be a great beneficiary and will allow Dell to pay down some of that debt so that it be can come investment grade. And they want to take on an amount of debt that will not crush VMware's balance sheet so that it will also be investment grade. So they're creating this equilibrium, if you will. Now, I've heard the ceiling on VMware's debt in order to get to equilibrium 
is, uh, or, or you order to maintain investment grade is no more than $5 billion. But I've also heard much, much higher numbers, as high as 8 to 10 to maybe even $12 billion. I don't know if VMware can take on that much debt and maintain investment grade. The point is there's some number there which, v, which Dell is going to force VMware to take on uh, uh, that debt. Now, one last thing I'll say is, despite Michael Dell's, uh, or Dell's technology's ownership and control, 90 plus percent control, it has a fiduciary responsibility to shareholders. But my view is it's meeting that responsibility because the value, it's unlocking value. So who can complain? It's again, it's absolutely fascinating and brilliant. But that's what that dividend is all about, is, is, is Dell saying, okay, VMware, you're going to take on more debt and you're going to help us pay down the Dell debt and you're going to take on more. We'll both be investment grade. And they both get Price value freedom. increase. Yeah. So it's yes, a financial correct. engineering deal. Michael Dell still can run both companies. Do you still think he will be running both companies? Yeah, I think there's no question that Michael Dell will be the chairman of Dell. He is the chairman of Dell Technologies, he's chairman of VMware, and he's going to continue to be. And so this, 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 this commercial agreement that they're going to sign is it's a wired deal. With VMware and Dell, and, and by the way, there is every incentive for VMware to do this. People may say, hey, they're strong arming Dell, blah, 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 but VMware, uh, Dell is a huge distribution channel for VMware, and I'll tell you something that Dell has done that better than EMT, EMC and Joe Tucci ever did, and you know we're big fans of Joe Tucci, but Dell has unlocked a channel for VMware the way EMC never did. V VMware, uh, through Dell, uh, has seen incredible growth uh, and, and really is Dell, as I would say, VMware's you know, most important partner, biggest partner, because Dell wasn't, didn't apologize for super gluing itself and VMware to it. Uh, whereas EMC was always much more cautious trying to play the ecosystem game. Well, they, they were uh, saving Dell their storage said, business with, with VMware. I mean, VMware saved EMC, some would say. Yeah, I I, I I I would say. I mean, if it weren't for if it weren't for the the acquisition of VMware back for six hundred and fifty million dollars in the early two thousands, you know, the EMC would have been a really uninteresting company over the over its last five to seven years. So they but, milk they make that milk that storage dry, but then they had that uplift with VMware. Michael says, "Hey, I'll put this right in the family," and this is what it is. It's it's a it's a deal where it's in the Dell family portfolio, and what Michael's doing is, to your point. And what you're saying is he's unlocking all this value for both Dell and VMware and saying, okay, let's go to market and figure it out. I got to tell you this, John, I mean, as a founder, co-founder, you know, obviously we're a little smaller than Dell, but you got to appreciate what Michael Dell has done here. He went through hell taking his company private. You know, took on Carl Icahn. I said yesterday, who beats the, the great icon? Well, Michael Dell beat the great icon. You know, who outmaneuvered Elliott? I mean, Elliott is a very influential player uh, in, in, in the market. Michael Dell said, you know what? I'm not going through that again. I have control of Dell Technologies. I have voting control over VMware. I'm going to do what's right for me, for my company, and my shareholders. And yeah. look, Michael Dell's making his shareholders money. I mean, who can complain I'll about I'll tell that? you, I mean, I'll tell you, there's two playbooks I look at, Andy Jassy and Michael Dell. I mean, Michael Dell, knows how to make money, right? He's always been a great money maker. He's also a geek. He loves to get down and dirty in the tech. Uh, he's got two 49 inch Dell monitors. He, obviously it's his company. He gets the best gear. All kidding aside, you know, he built a company, went public, took it private. And that was a reset. I mean, in his stage of his life, it was his reset. This is his swan song. He's having a ball and he's a financially engineered this success with the power that he built and it's a whole nother level, whole nother chapter in his life. And he's a money maker, he knows how to make money. You put, you put Silver Lake and Michael Dell together. You put Amazing. Michael Dell I mean, with, with these kinds of, of, of brains, uh, with his asset base, as you say, the cash flow of Dell, with the asset of say, a crown jewel like VMware, that literally can pave the path to the future. He could ride on the cloud back all day long. He doesn't need a public cloud for anything. Yeah, well, so before we talk about that, I just want to double down on what you said. People just always say, yeah, Michael Dell, you know, he's a finance guy. It's not true. 
Yes, he's got a well. He's got a finance team that is amazing, and, and um, no doubt Michael is, is is instrumental there. But he's a business genius. I mean, he really a business visionary. Yeah, guy built his own PCs in college, so he's obviously, like you said, he's a geek. Technically, extremely savvy. Savvy. He's a visionary. He's one of the one of the top. I don't know, ten visionaries in the com computer industry. I, I would say history. So now. You're absolutely right. Uh, well, you say it doesn't need a cloud. I, I think my concern about this whole deal yesterday when I misunderstood that this was spin on, spinning off and becoming untethered is what about the edge? What about multi-cloud? You know, what's a Dell's play there? Well, Dell's play is still VMware. Their strategy hasn't changed one bit. I mean, nothing changes. The only change is the direct ownership of VMware stock, which unlocks value. Nothing else changes here. Let me tell you to wrap my, my piece up here and then we can wrap it up. Just in interface with Michael over the years and knowing him personally, um, seeing him up close, here's how I think his mind works. You, you mentioned he assembled PCs in college. Okay, he built out, he you know, pioneered, um, you know, putting suppliers in supply chain, uh, getting prices lower, direct mail. He pioneered that direct to consumer, all these successes. This whole world that it is in, that's in there is like assembling a PC in his dorm room, except he's got it with billions of dollars. You know, little VMware here, processor <laughs> IO. I mean, he's essentially a financial geek at this point. I mean, although he likes to look in and he loves Pivotal, he loves some of the things he's doing with, with VMware. He likes to look under the hover, covers and, and, and see the, the engine, but he's a financial assembler now. So he's looking at this and you can see how it's all working and to your scoop here, um, yeah, I guess it looks like a spin out if that's what people want to call it and the press jump on that. But if it pieces, it takes the hair off the deal. That's basically makes the IO move better. He's got a you know good bus there, 32 bits. Again, assembling a PC, assembling companies and creating value. He makes money, I love Dave. it. I, it's a great analogy. The piece parts are a little bit you know, more valuable. But the only other thing, I just want to clarify what I said. The other thing that changes is the income statement. Dell will no longer recognize you know, VMware revenue. Um, and, and and so that that changes, and of course the balance sheet changes. That that's a huge change. Now, and I guess the caveat is, you know, this in theory couldn't happen, but it just makes so much sense. Um, I, I was kind of sniffing around it in my breaking analysis when this thing first leaked, uh, I, and I said in that, John, that if the financial geniuses at Dell can figure out some way to monetize this, well, here it is. It now is becoming much much more clear, and uh, I'm impressed. Well, Dave, he was assembling PCs in college. Now he's assembling companies. What did we do in college? <laughs> Don't even go there. Dave, well, let's, great. let's end it there. <laughs> we'll end it right there. Uh, Dave, great, great scoop, top story. Michael Dell is not selling VMware. It's a transaction. It's going to have all that value and it's unlocking more Dell tech value. Look for the shares to be distributed to the Dell technology shareholders. And it's the same game, super gluing together creating value for both. Dave, great scoop, thanks for, thanks for joining me. Thank so you, Cube, John, thanks for having me. Cube special report and analysis here in studio in California, Dave Vellante in Massachusetts. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.